Right here is a beautiful rib roast, one of my favorite things to dry age, but we're about to do something to it that may just be the worst decision of my entire life. What we have today is something called Mad Dog Plutonium. It is the hottest sauce in the entire world, but I really don't think sauce is the right way to describe this stuff. It's more like a black tar that should be more appropriately named Liquid Death. We're gonna cover the roast before we dry age it, but keep in mind, this has 9 million Scoville units and all sorts of warnings on it. So only time will tell if I'll be making a little trip to the ER later today. But either way, let's get started. This is a beautiful prime grade rib roast. You can see it has that beautiful marbling all throughout and more importantly, a huge cap muscle. This right here is the best part of the ribeye. Now, usually with dry aging, you wanna find a roast that still has those bones attached to give you some nice protection. But in this case, I'm fine without them. I want as much of that liquid death to penetrate as deep as possible. Okay, at this point, I'm just putting off the inevitable. Let's open this stuff up. So here's the package, looks pretty terrifying. I'm just gonna read some stuff off the back of it. Due to the extreme hot nature of this product, this product shall be used with extreme care in very small this amounts only. This use at your own risk. I fully understand I hereby disclaim, release, and relinquish any and all claims, potential danger if used or handled in that I or any of my dependents, hairs, family members, or damage or injury that may result. I am not inebriated or otherwise not of a sound mind, and I'm fully able to make a sound decision about the purchase of this product. Well, I can't say I'm of sound mind, but I'm definitely not inebriated right now, so let's do it very tiny amount, but I'm sure it's very potent. Definitely gonna wanna throw in some gloves for this. Okay, let's open it up. That just looks deadly. So this stuff is extremely thick. It's almost like a syrup. It definitely smells spicy, but it's not too pungent. Let's keep going. Okay, so we've added plastic wrap to the cutting board. We're gonna throw this directly on it. At $140 per bottle, this stuff isn't cheap and clearly is meant to be used in very small amounts only. So I proceeded to pour the entire bottle over the roast. And something else to mention, while putting the sauce on the roast initially, I got a tiny amount on my wrist and for legit five days straight, my wrist was burning. This stuff really is no joke. Okay, now we just emptied this whole one ounce jar onto the roast, but here's a crazy fact to keep in mind. To make one ounce of this, it requires a thousand ounces of hot peppers. That's 62 pounds of hot peppers that goes into this that is now on this steak. It is hot. Time to rub it in. What surprised me most was it had pretty much zero smell. Even so, you could definitely feel it in your lungs. <coughs> 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 Okay, our steak is officially orange. We're gonna let it hang out in the dry ager for 30 days. Now, before we go any further, I figured it's only fair that I taste a few hot things so that you guys have an accurate understanding of where my spice tolerance is. Starting with some Duke's hot and spicy sausages. A little bit of a kick, but overall pretty mild. Okay, next up some Frank's Red Hot, clocking in at 450 Scoville. Very good. Okay, next up, hot banana peppers. It's more vinegary than spicy. I thought it was super spicy at first. Not bad. Next up, sriracha, clocking in at 1,000 to 2,500 Scoville. Still doing good. Next up, some truff, which is just over 2,500. A little bit of sweetness, that's great. Next up, Tabasco at 4,000. Here we go. Definitely getting spicier, but still manageable. Okay, next up, jalapenos that go as high as 8,000. I'm just gonna bite it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was stupid. It's not like overly spicy, it's just slowly building up, <laughs> all of them combined. I'm not totally accustomed to just eating hot sauces back to back to back. This is no longer fun. Okay, next up, habanero ranging from 100,000 to 350,000, so a big jump here. I feel terrible for my bathroom tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's very hot. I think right around here, I've hit the point where it's like enjoyment and just not enjoyment. <sighs> I completely forgot I got milk. Okay, next up we have Melinda's Ghost Pepper, north of 500,000 Scoville units. If you are enjoying this video, please do me a favor, go on down and like it. It really helps me out and this is gonna be very painful. 
Definitely spicy, but this is more of a sauce that I can enjoy eating. I do not recommend biting into a habanero like this though. And finally, we have this thing right here. So in order to try and see how hot this is, we're gonna dilute this into some water. And I just placed a singular drop into a full water bottle. So this is really unexpected. It looks like it's not even water soluble. It's like stuck to the bottom and to the sides kind of. I'm just gonna keep shaking. <sighs> now, before I finally taste this stuff, I went on Reddit to see what people think of it. When my employees tried it, one guy went and threw up, then passed out in the walk-in cooler. Just hot, painful, and no flavor. Never again. I think it's pretty accurate though. Good luck with it and throw some toilet paper in the freezer. <laughs> what? <sighs> I'm gonna try one tiny drop of this. Absolutely zero flavor, but it's extremely spicy. Just like boring a hole in my tongue. I'm honestly feeling like we might have bit off more than we can chew. Okay, now that you guys know where I lie on the spice spectrum, time to take out that roast. And this thing was quite the sight. It sort of reminded me of what I envisioned the surface of Mars looking like, or kind of like it was covered in Cheetos. Sadly, this was not the case. Just looking at the texture on this thing, I mean, it almost looks radioactive. It's like that sauce has just been eating away at that meat. It's kind of scary. I sliced it open to reveal what looked like a perfectly dry aged roast, a nice thin pellicle, and some really great marbling. And as with all dry aging experiments, I completely removed the pellicle. Even though it holds a lot of flavor, it's completely dry and inedible. Even though the sides have been trimmed away, the smell is still very potent. It's sort of like gasoline, but honestly, it kind of just reminds me of death. I kept the seasoning simple with just some kosher salt, making sure to get both sides and the edges. To a hot pan, I added oil and began to sear, which turns out was a big mistake. Oh man, <laughs> it's going well. Sophia's eyes immediately started tearing. You could really feel it in your lungs. It, there's definitely a lot of spice still in this thing. Searing this indoors was a really stupid idea, and I'm in pain just looking back on this footage. The fumes were extremely intense, and it got to a point where we had to evacuate the whole house. I wasn't gonna share this, but there was a short period where we actually considered going to the hospital. All right, guys, well, that was very eye-opening. This whole experiment, I've been like, oh, it's gonna be hot, like, we'll figure it out. Cooking that steak was no joke whatsoever. Right now, the whole lining and inside of my nose is just destroyed. Eyes are absolutely killing me right now. It feels like we got maced, like, all throughout the room, and it's kind of still happening. So if for whatever reason, after this video, you do want to buy this stuff, please be extremely careful. Actually, just don't buy it, because it's probably not worth it. Despite the pain, we had an amazing crust, and honestly, the steak looked amazing. A perfect medium rare interior, and visually, there was no indication of the extreme spice we had just endured. But at this point, the only thing left to do was give it a taste. Well guys, we're finally here. I uh, got my milk here. I'm just trying to figure out what to do, to be honest right now. like. I want to eat it and show you guys that I ate it and let you know what it's like. But I also feel like I'm about to dose myself with like an unregulated drug at an amount that I'm just not totally aware of. So I'm going to start by taking a piece directly out of the middle. Cooked pretty well. Nice char. I'm just going to put my tongue to it. <coughs> I feel like it's okay. There's already so much spice like in my system and on my face. I can't even really tell. I'm doing it. My sister's freaking out. This is not the best steak I've ever cooked in terms of taste. You definitely taste the spiciness, but I'm, I'm really not getting too much actual heat from it. I'm gonna try a little bigger piece this time. All right. Definitely getting a kick on that one. It very much tastes like chemicals. I'm not gonna finish the steak, I'm gonna finish the milk, but stay tuned for more crazy dry aging recipes and I'll see you next time. End it.